Today, we're talking about the vertical dyad linkage model, and we're working out of Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership, a communication perspective. I'll put a link to that book in the description below this video, so feel free to check that out. Well, let's get into the details. So George Grain and Associates developed this model decades ago. It's an early relational model of leadership. There's lots of other skill-based models and traits models. This is about how the leader relates to the follower. So it's a relational model. Now, before this, most researchers believed that leaders use about the same style of leadership with the overall group. So we thought that the leader led the group as an entire collective. What Grain and his associates found, though, is that leaders treated individual followers differently, and followers then had their own individual perceptions of their leader, both positive and negative. So you might have one leader, and some of the people thought the leader was really great and a strong leader and had good connections with people, and other people might have thought, no, you know, this person is not very connected with me. I don't feel close to them at all. So different perceptions, depending upon how the leader treated those individuals. The results were in groups where some people were close to the leader and out groups where other people felt like they were not in that inner circle. So let's look more carefully at in groups and out groups, which is a major feature of this theory. So in group members have close relationships with the leader. They typically play some specific types of roles, like they might be acting as an assistant to the leader or a quote, lieutenant, some kind of advisor. These are not necessarily official capacities, but that's the role they play. In other words, they have they add some value to that relationship. There's a reason for them to be in contact and have close relationships. In-group members enjoy high levels of trust. They have mutual influence and support between themselves and the leader. They are allowed more freedom more latitude and more influence over decision-making. The expectations for them though are often higher. They, there's an expectation for them to have good achievement, take on more responsibilities and more loyalty to the leader than the outgroup members. So there's a note here that I want to make sure we emphasize that these relationships must be reciprocal and they must be mutually maintained. So just like any relationship that you have ever been in, it takes both people to invest in the relationship to get this kind of in-group result. So let's move on to talk about the out-group members. Out-group members have a very different experience. They get treated by leaders in a typical authoritarian or task-oriented style, just a standard managerial approach, you might say. They have mutually low levels of trust and support with each other. Now, that doesn't mean that there's distrust like, I don't trust that person. It's just that they haven't developed the trust yet to look out for each other and to support each other. They're not granted as much freedom or influence over decisions, and they don't have a lot of input with that leader. Outgroup members are expected to meet the formal role requirements that are spelled out by the organization. They're supposed to meet deadlines and fulfill the organization's overall expectations but they have lower expectations and how they perform than the in-group members. So they have a very different kind of experience depending upon whether you are in the in-group or the out-group. Now, how do these in-groups and out-groups form to begin with? Well, the research shows that the leaders make a choice about who gets close to them or not. That obviously the follower also has to desire a closer relationship, an in-group relationship with the leader, but the leader is really in the driver's seat about who they let in or not. They have those boundary management, decision-making abilities. And it's based upon a lot of factors, just like your personal relationships, compatibility, liking, similarity, your work styles, lots of other factors will determine on whether you naturally mesh or not. Now, followers may move in and move out of these in-groups and out-groups, depending upon a lot of factors as well, and their ability to fit the supervisor's expectations and preferences. And this is also true if the leader changes. So sometimes you'll get a new supervisor, a new manager, and then your relationship might be different with the new person than it was with your original managers. You might've been on the in-group 
under one leader and then a new leader takes over and you find yourself on the out group and that that happens all the time so it all depends upon that relationship and that's why we call this a relational model of leadership so question of the day have you ever found yourself in the in group and or out group in a work situation i would love to hear your comments and responses to that question below and i look forward to reading your comments there take care and i'll see you next time